You're building ships in Space Engineers wrong. Building ships in Space Engineers takes a lot of time and there's a lot of, well, that's a lot of investment they don't want to put in. Especially as you can spend hours building a ship only for it to be destroyed moments later. But part of the problem is that a lot of people are building ships wrong. So today I'm going to show you a method of building ships that doesn't take as much time. It's much easier than normal ways of doing it and will greatly improve your experience of playing Space Engineers. Let's begin! The first way of building ships is using the good old hand welder. Surprisingly, this is one of the better ways of building ships due to the addition of the build planner. If you right click on a block, you can add all of its components to the build planner. And then by pressing middle click, you can withdraw all the components you can carry. If you want to see me cover the build planner in detail, I've covered it in length in these two videos here. Check them out. Now you can immediately see an issue with this as I cannot withdraw 231 metal grids and 40 large steel tubes. And this is the main drawback of building with the hand welder is that your inventory size is so limited. And even if you increase your inventory size in the settings of your world, some of the larger blocks in Space Engineers like jump drives and gyroscopes require multiple trips in order to be fully welded up. And even on the fastest welding speeds, it still takes forever to weld up blocks. There is one other advantage to this, which is more of a personal preference, but there is nothing like hand building a ship in survival in Space Engineers. Hand placing all the blocks and welding up, watching your ship grow organically as you need different bits on it and that's a really fun experience not many games give you and I recommend you try and hand build a ship once just for the experience of it and you can consider it some sort of challenge where you're not allowed to use welders. So let's go over the strengths and weaknesses of using the hand welder. First the build planner makes it super easy to gather components you need. Building by hand is a fun and engaging way to build ships however your inventory size is very small and welding is very slow for blocks that have lots of components. Next up we have ship tools. Here we have a ship that's designed to weld up ships. Now you think using a welding ship would be better than using a regular hand welder, but uh, you'd be surprised. Now one of the first immediate advantages is that the welder can weld multiple blocks in a radius. However, you'll also immediately notice that the welder is much slower than welding with the hand and I already listed that as a weakness of using the hand welder. So this is even slower. Obviously the ship makes up for that in two ways. First of all, like I said, it welds in a radius and second of all, ships that you build will always have a higher inventory capacity than the player does as you can keep adding more cargo containers as you need them. Now as I mentioned, the welders are slower than using the tier 3 hand welder even with improved settings. However the second problem also arises when you run out of materials to weld with as the player has access to the build planner and ships do not. Now I'm sure most of you agree that docking is an absolute chore in Space Engineers. Getting your ship lined up, connecting and then once you're connected don't have to move all of the materials manually to your ship. There are ways to automate this however none of these are simple enough or easy enough to compete with the functionality of the build planner. Just the build planner is just so good and I wish there was an equivalent for ships. So let's go over the strengths and weaknesses of ship welders. Ships have bigger inventory sizes than players do, obviously, and chip welders can weld up multiple blocks at the same time. However, ship welders are much slower than higher tier hand ones, and there's no build planner for ships, and you have to dock your ships and transfer resources over, which takes much longer than the engineer does to use the build planner. So now that we've covered the two normal ways of welding up ships, let's cover the way I'd recommend to improve your space engineer's experience massively. The first thing I'd recommend you always do is build your ships in creative first. In creative you have many tools like symmetry allowing you to easily place large amounts of blocks. You can also place multiple blocks at a time. You see I'm placing a whole row and if I hold shift and control I can place a whole plane of blocks. Then holding shift and control again I can also delete a whole plane of blocks. This allows you to produce much larger ships like the Galaxian over here in a much shorter time. And like this little mining ship here I'd never build something like this in survival because it would just take so long to place all these armor blocks. But in creative I have no problem placing it because I've got all the time in the world and unlimited resources. And every time I want to make changes to the ship I don't have to to grind down all the blocks and place them all. I can just delete them all, replace them, and because I've got symmetry, it's automatically fixed on the other side of the ship. In order to set up symmetry on a ship, all you have to do is look at it, press M, and it'll bring up a symmetry plane. You can press M again to change the angle, and you can also press M if you want an offset. So say you've got a ship that's an even number of blocks, which this one isn't, this is an odd number of blocks. You could press M again to move it across one block, and we have a horizontal one. For this one, I want this vertical plane, so once I've got it in there, I, pr I click, and now it's placed down, and then if you press M again till the block comes back, you can now place blocks again. So now if I place a block here, you'll see the block comes up on the other side. Much, much much easier than placing all those blocks in survival by hand and then welding them up afterwards. Once you've built your ship and you're happy with it, obviously you've tested it, flown it around the planet to make sure it flies, etc, etc. Go to the back of your ship, press Control b to make a blueprint, and you see I've got a blueprint here. The reason you want to take a blueprint from behind is if I come and paste it in now, you can see it's pasted it in from the front, so it knows that the front of the ship is here and the back of the ship is here. But this is a mistake a lot of people make, they blueprint their ships from like random angles, so when they paste, copy and paste it back in, they paste it from the side rather than from the back, so please keep that in mind when blueprinting your ship. If you're not happy with the picture that you have of the ship, go press F10 to bring a blueprint menu, so this is called Well Sass Grind. Go up to it, take a screenshot, now you have a nice screenshot bit at a normal angle. Now obviously we don't want to be building small ships, the small ships are quite easy to place by hand. We want to be building something big like Thunderbird 2 over here. 
So now that we have our blueprints, we now need to make use of them in survival. And for that, we need the projector block. Once you've placed a projector on your ship, go to any terminal. You see I've got my projector here. You can go on the list, you've got blueprints. If you click that button, you go through all your blueprints. So we want Thunderbird 2. So we'll get the darker one. And you press copy to clipboard. So as you can see with the projector on, we've now got a projection of Thunderbird 2. Now, depending on how the ship comes out of the projector, you might need to reorientate it. In order to do this, you go to your terminal. You've got these sliders here. Now, I won't lie, considering the way the terminal system works, it is very difficult to do it from here. So I'd recommend getting a mod if you can. If you can, you can add the increase and decrease of offset and the rotation on the toolbar. And we'll make it a bit easier so you can go, you can close this menu. So if I put increase height offset on here, you can close this menu and I can now press 1 to increase it. However, I personally recommend using the build vision mod, which allows you to walk up to a block and change its settings whilst looking at it. So from here, I can now use the scroll wheel. I can now move the ship forward and backwards. I actually have a full spotlight of this mod on my top mods video if you want to check it out. But at the moment, I'm just going to use this to orientate the projection in the correct position. And this part is where making the blueprint the correct way pays off. It's now using the forward onset. I can actually move it forward. If you place it the wrong way around, I wouldn't be able to move it forward at this moment. So the directions make a little bit more sense. And there you go. The projection for Thunderbird 2 is now perfectly aligned with this projector block. As you can see, this thruster here is a slightly darker color. This is because this block is currently weldable as it's attached to another block. So if I get my welder up, I'm now able to weld it up. And there you go. There's our first block of our new ship. Now, of course, this is easier to build the ship. However, this is still going to take you a long time to build. Even if you hand weld it a bit with the ship, we still have the same problems we had before. It's still going to take forever to weld by hand. If only there were a simpler way of welding the ship that didn't require you to spend all this time welding up each individual block or using a ship to slowly pan around the ship. Oh wait, there is? So here we have a little ship I've built to project Thunderbird 2. If I turn the projector on, you'll see Thunderbird 2 pops out. One useful thing you can do when you're projecting something is you can toggle on show a buildable on, and that will only show the blocks that are currently weldable, which is just as thruster at the moment, as you'll need this in a minute when you're welding off a ship. Now if I go over to my second setup, you'll see we've got a line of spinning welders. Now there is no reason to build it as a spinning welder, you can just build it as one static welder. This is just an easy way of saving resources on building welders, so you only have a couple of welders that spin around in a circle. And also it requires much less PCU to build this many welders as it does to have hundreds of welders on a single block. Obviously, in single player, PCU doesn't matter as much. But if this was a multiplayer server, like the one I'm going to be hosting on my Discord in a few weeks, this is a much more efficient use of your PCU limit. So now if I fly my little ship over to the welding array, obviously the glass is there to stop me from crashing into it, you see that the thruster starts to get welded up. There you go, the thruster's now done. Just gonna wait for it to do another pass, just so we can get those panels, there you go. Right, I'm gonna pull back a little bit. There you go, it's done another section, pull back a little bit further. There you go, it's now done in the next row, kind of. And the idea being that you slowly pull back, oh, there you go, it's done the full back section there. And the idea being that you slowly pull the ship back, and pull it out from the welder so that you got a fully formed ship at the end. So obviously as you pull back, the ship will get heavier, so you might need a slightly more heavy duty ship to pull the ship back, as I I've just thrown together some thrusters and a projector and you can see even as, as it's welding the one gyro on the ship isn't enough to keep the ship straight it also might be worth keeping in mind that you probably want to blueprint your ships with all the power turned off as the ship you're building expands obviously the power from your little ship will be used from the big ship so you might run out of power Obviously, this is the easiest to do in space. However, if you get a rover on the planet, you could easily pull this up as well. Just have your spinning welder weld up your ship as you slowly pull back. Obviously, this can be used for small ships as well. As you can see, I put a rotor here. And what you could do is you could add a small ship rotor to your ship or just use a small ship, paste a projector on there, and then pull it out of the welding array, the same as I'm doing for that big ship over there. The reason I recommend doing this over the other methods is that for starters, you generally have all of your resources at your base, which means having the giant spinning welder at your base is easier. Now, obviously, this doesn't have to be at a base. This is a ship I used on a server once, and as you can see on the back here, I have an array of welders on the back here. Now, this was for pasting in fighters. I'd have a little ship pull out fighters from here, and then I could dock the fighters to the side. And because this ship was my main base, all of my resources were stored at this base, so I could easily print off new ships as needed. Now, this obviously fixes one of the main flaws with the welding ship, which is that you have to keep going back for resources and there's no build planner. You don't need the build planner when all of your resources on the main ship. You just look to see what's not being welded up and then build those resources. Now there is a mod you can use called Project to Assembler, which has a button to your projector to add all the blocks needed for your ship to the production queue. So if I press Send to Assembler here, and now I go to my production queue, you can see I've got all these things queued up. So you can see it's building glass. So these are all the components needed for Thunderbird 2. So provided I had the resources, which I don't on this ship, it would assemble everything needed to build the ship. Obviously, if you didn't have mods, you just have a look at your ship, see what's not being welded up, and maybe queue up a couple of thousand of that component. I will mention quickly that you could technically achieve all of this using pistons by slowly moving the ship away or slowly moving the welders away from the ship. I don't want to risk lang though. Having a single row to spin some welders around is fine. Having pistons pull away a ship that's being built at the same time because the weight constantly changing on the pistons bound to cause some issues. Especially if you're on a server, welding up a subgrid on your main ship sounds like a recipe for disaster. You can see here in a matter of minutes how much of Thunderbird 2 I've made. I missed a couple of blocks because I was being a bit impatient. But even if you took your time with this, it would still be much faster than hand welding a ship or building a ship with a welding ship. 
Ham Wilders have access to the build partner, but this setup doesn't need it as it has access to all the components and crafting at your base, and this also solves the inventory space issue we were having earlier. Whilst I mentioned welding by hand can be quite fun, it's also fun to engineer your way around problems, and finding a fast way to build ships is definitely a big problem to engineer around. Overall, using this method to build ships is just a much faster and efficient way to build ships, and it's not really that complicated. But you know what else isn't that complicated? Clicking like and subscribe if this video was helpful to you. And do you guys have any other suggestions to make building ships faster or easier? Let me and everyone else know with a comment below.